Hi, my name is Rosica and this is The Midnight Reader. Today we are going to be talking about banned books because honestly, what's the point of not being monetized if you can't talk about the shit? I saw the hashtag of read banned books come up on a channel that I follow called Bookish, which he's fantastic and amazing and he was very nice to me when I was in e microscopic booktuber. He tagged a bunch of people in this and I wanted to do the tag so I am going to. It's an older tag and it's been resurrected for the year 2022 and basically the idea is that you find a book that's been banned or challenged and you talk about why people should read banned books and why they should probably not be banned. The book that I selected was named in 2020 as being the fourth most challenged and banned book in the United States and that is Speak by Lori Hulse Anderson. This is a young adult novel published in 1999. It follows the story of Melinda and Melinda doesn't talk. She's 13. She's a freshman in high school. We know that something happened to her to cause her almost total muteness, but we don't know what. And the fact that she doesn't speak actually doesn't make too much difference to the reader because you hear the story from her mind and she has a very talkative and humorous personality but she's dealing with something that she doesn't have the tools to deal with. We start to figure out that in the summer before she started high school, Melinda went to her first real party and it was with a bunch of upperclassmen. She started drinking to fit in. A popular senior boy started flirting with her. She starts dancing with him, kissing with him, starts fantasizing about starting high school with a boyfriend and the sort of stuff that a lot of people at 13 years old would kind of feel about love. However, the party doesn't have a happy ending like she thought it would and she winds up being raped. She's drunk and terrified and she does the first thing that comes to her mind which she goes inside the house after it happens and she calls the police. She doesn't know what to say to the dispatcher because she's in shock so they just take the address of the house that she's currently at. People realize the cops are coming, they start screaming at her, someone hits her, and she does what a lot of 13 year old girls would do. She runs away and then she tells no one. A lot of people get in trouble for going to this party. There are arrests, people lose their jobs, and she starts high school as a pariah. And she goes from being a pretty popular, happy-go-lucky AB student to failing, ditching, and completely apathetic. She wants to tell her former friends, she wants to tell her parents, but no one makes her feel like they want to hear what she has to say so she just doesn't say anything and she sinks deeper and deeper into depression and apathy. To make things worse her attacker attends her school and he dates her friends. The story is really about her dealing with the aftermath of what happened to her and to find her voice to stop it from happening to other girls. So I read this when I was Melinda's age. I was maybe 12 to 13 years old and I remember it being a very depressing book <laughs> but a book that I, I loved because for the most part the book is just a slice of life story. It's about her daily life and the fact that you know this awful thing that happened to her still seeps into pretty much every part of her life but she's still just a kid and she still has all the concerns that a regular 13 year old girl does. She wants to fit in. She wants boys to like her. She wants more friends. She thinks her school mascot is stupid. <laughs> and the reason I think it resonated with a lot of teenagers is because she talks like teenagers talk and she has the same concerns that most teenagers had. And she suffers a lot from people failing to imagine her complexly. That doesn't make her better at imagining other people complexly but she starts to have growth in that area and starts to, to find her empathy for others and her own courage. And I think the reason a lot of people like this book other than the language is that it's mostly about depression. It's about depression and it's about PTSD. Most people can empathize with being incredibly depressed. In one of the scenes, she sort of wanders into a hospital and she sort of thinks about staying and telling people what happened to her because she knows something is wrong and she wants to feel cared for. But she winds up leaving while still saying nothing because she sees other people who are injured or ill 
and she says something to effect that I'm the sort of sick that you can't see and that starts to eat her alive and isolates her. She starts to find her voice through art and not feeling so alone by having friends who are willing to imagine her as more complex than just a loser in an arc. The story isn't really about her rape, it's about the aftermath of her rape. It's about her finding her voice, about her finding the strength to protect other girls, to finally tell someone, to finally speak. So why is the book banned? It's banned because in two pages she describes her assault. Frankly, it's pretty fleeting and unexplicit, but it's frequently challenged and banned for being pornographic. And to me, this is sort of nonsensical. Classifying sexual assault as pornography says a lot more about pornography than it says about sexual assault. I think the sentiment is that a lot of parents feel like they don't want their kid reading a book that includes sex and particularly sexual violence. But the reality is that kids see it anyway, guys. When I was 13 years old, I hated when adults treated me like a child. And I promise you that your kids learn more from movies and their phones and the internet way ahead of all the things you wanna to talk to them about. Give kids enough credit to realize that they can learn about complex issues like consent. I wish more kids would read this book and there's a reason why it's still on library shelves over 20 years after it was published. It helps teach young adults the damage that they can cause by ignoring the sound of no, and that the absence of a no is not a yes. I'm just gonna come back to this, which is that why do stories matter? Stories matter because we can't always speak using our own voices. 20 years after Lori Hulse Anderson published Speak, she finally had the strength to tell people that she was raped at 13 years old and that the story of Speak was in part the truth of her own experience. People have stories that they won't talk about. Almost every woman I know has a story of being followed, of being shouted at in the street, of being frightened, of being touched, of saying no and not being heard. Stories are powerful things and we're poor without them. And honestly, the fact that this book is so constantly in the top 10 banned books list just makes me kind of sad. I'm just going to end with a quote from Lori Hulse Anderson from The Back of Speak, which is, Our inability to speak clearly and openly about sexual issues endangers our children. It is immoral not to discuss it with them. Don't ban this book from library shelves. If you don't want your kid to read it, tell them not to read it. They'll be poorer for it, I guarantee. This is my contribution to the Read More Banned Books 2022 tag. If you would like to do it, please go ahead. Leave me a note in the comments so that I know you did it after watching this video. Also, if you write something unkind in the comments, I will delete your ass so fucking quick because I have no issues with that at all. I hope you read Speak and I hope you understand why it should be on a young adult library shelf.